So welcome to another unboxing video from theplayers8.com. My name's Alexander, and today we are taking a look at a brand new game from Compass Games called Stellar Horizons. Very dramatic. And it's by Andrew uh, Raider, I believe. And this is something a little different from Compass. I may do a lot of war games. This is not quite a 4X game, but it's a 4X style uh, science-based kind of exploration game in near human future. Uh, this is a big, a very big game. Uh, when this arrived, I don't know what I was expecting, but uh, it, it, I picked up the box, and it seemed like it was a normal size box, the package that it came in, but it was so heavy, I was just like, what on earth is this? It's amazing. Uh, but this is huge. So, for reference, this is Commands and Colors Tricorn, which is a three inch box packed full of wood. And this box is about double the size of it. Yeah, and it weighs about twice as much as Tricorn does. There is a lot of stuff in here if I just drop it on the table. So, uh, this is one of their really thick boxes. It has almost like a linen finish to it. Oh, I get there. Oh, it's hard to control. So, uh, this plays up to seven people. Uh, takes, they say, from two to four hours. We'll see. Uh, that's something I'd be interested in. I presume it's a bit longer when you've got more people. Uh, there's a bit more downtime between turns and things like that. Um, but I love a good science fiction game, especially when the, it's a bit more on the hard science, a bit more realism, a bit more local. It's not just like space wizards and lasers. There's a place for all that, but this is a bit more exploration, getting to places, exploiting resources, I, I, and it's, I, I've enjoyed that style of game as well. So let's uh, open it up and see what we get in this. Okay. All right, we do have a bunch of stuff. So we have, this is not, not just a bag of bags. This is a ton of bags. That's a lot of bags they give you. Um, so that's probably an indication of uh, the, the amount of stuff that's in here. We also have a bag of dice. And the dice is sealed for freshness. And we've got two red D10s. And then we have a black D100 percentiles there. We have the rules and scenarios. And also the rules and scenarios. And those are both English. And they're both the same. So it looks like we get two sets of rules, which is nice. Especially if we've got lots of players. Easy to pass those around. So I actually appreciate that. Uh, looks like we have nice setup examples and diagrams. Uh, there's a good chunk of text in this, oh, especially later on in the rules. Uh, so there is some good rules to go through. Uh, look like the diagrams at the beginning is going to help us get this set up. This is um, tech trees and some aids and things like that. But it looks like we really have, so, I mean, we're looking at 28 pages of rules. So not terribly bad, but there's definitely rules for... Well, they, these are optional rules. There's definitely optional rules for combat, so <laughs> that, that'll be interesting. And these are scenarios, I think? Those are events, these are scenarios. So really, rules-wise, 22 pages of rules. That's not terrible. Uh, I've played a fair number of sci-fi games before that had more rules than that, so... And you get two of them, which is nice. I actually appreciate them doing that. These do seem to be identical. Yep. So, if you've got eight, you know, seven players around a table, You've, you've got aids there. Sequence of play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh yeah. This is, now this is a game right here. When you have play aids like this, that's kind of like a manual, it'd be really easy for them to cheap out on you and not have those, but sequence of play. It looks like all the real quick and dirty rules here that you might need. So that's actually very nice. So you've got two main rules and scenarios, and you got each player can have access to these at the same time. So that's quite nice. I like that. We have an epic version of Expansion Stars. This looks like a more regular style play aid. Order of the Planets, Belts and Discs, and maybe some form of tech tree, maybe? 
Interesting, but there's a bunch of those. Looks like there's eight of those, or seven of those as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yep. And these are all the same. I think these are for referencing. I don't know if you'll use them as kind of actual play pieces like you would something like this. Oh, whoops. So this, <laughs> this you just, it's a punch out. This is a board that you will have on the table. And it looks like this is turns and years, decades and time. And looks like we've got some terraforming charts here as well. And an initiative track based on who's playing. So there you go, your stellar horizons on the back. So that's quite nice. Um, not sure if we need it to, to punch out. We'll just toss that. Okay, here we've got us counter sheet 26 addendum. Yowzers. Uh, so it looks like these are extras that were printed, not extras, but errata counters, ones that were done to, to resolve misprints. So I do appreciate that. Uh, and it looks like they've got some revised, two minor rules problems were discovered. So they give you some errata there, which is nice. So we've got, okay, a lot of different tokens that we're going to use in the board. Uh, I don't know if these are world card sheets, 19 and 20. But there's a whole bunch of different types of things here. So we've got silicone rocks, hydrogen, subterranean water, mixed ice. So it looks like these are going to be maybe things that you find on planets uh, that you land on. I don't know if these are randomized or if, uh, or if they're kind of set up but per scenario. So, and here we started getting to the planets. This is what you're going to set the board up as. So this uh, it is quite literally Jupiter. Again, we'll toss that. So Jupiter is going to be put out on the board. Uh, and there's a series of tracks uh, and bo boxes for traveling through the galaxy. Looks like you can go to um, the Tropians and the Greeks. You can just do a flyby. And if you note, know, these also have... Um, some other values in them, but it's if you're traveling to and from, going into orbit and then landing or going into orbit of some of these planets, it has boxes to do all of that and travel through, which I would presume is also related to time. So to, to make certain kind of maneuvers would take longer or burn more energy, things like that. That's what I would imagine that this is. All right, that's okay. This is the board with the tech tree. And if we looked in the back of the rule book, he says, the rule book had this kind of printed out like they do with uh, some of their uh, war games where they print the counter sheets in the back so they know what you got. Here we've got our tech tree so you can advance through different things. And it also has um, some different national flags. So I don't know if some things are off limits to certain factions or it's easier for some factions to get those. That'd be interesting to see how that plays out too. But uh, obviously it's divided up into three major sections that this game covers, which is uh, biophysics and engineering. And that's a nice folding board. And then we have here... Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is so heavy. <laughs> this is everything else that's in the, in the game. Is this massive stack of cardboard. And if you notice, unlike most other games that you'll find, there's no kind of the uh, like the packing insert where it's some folded cardboard to keep it stored safely in postage. <laughs> There's no need because the, <laughs> the game is packed already with components. Uh, so let's open this up and there are, you'll see why there's so many counters in this, or so many baggies in this game. And it's because there are a significant number of counters. Uh, okay. And to start with, we have Neptune. Again, that's going along with our uh, Saturn and Jupiter that we had. Very similar layout that you're going to expect to see from those planets. Whoa, okay. These are falling out of the sprues. I'm not even touching them, and the money's kind of falling out. So these are well-cut, um, pre-rounded. This is very thick cardboard, so I'm very impressed by that, too. Um, so these are the denominations. It looks like we've got 1 billion and 2 billion coins. Let me... Uh, Try and keep that stuff together. These are a lot of different national markers. So the nations are, I think it's it's US, Canada, Russia, 
EU, China, Japan, and it's India, and then it's South America slash Africa. They have a conglomeration of, uh, you know, they've, this is, it's the future where some space agencies have combined and things like that. So these are going to be all markers, presumably for territories or achievements, maybe used on a tech track, just a lot of markers here. Uh, uh, looks like these are combat drones, so we got some combat units there. I don't know if those are defensive or not. And here we have some more plane pieces. These look like they might be water. Presumably got to feed and hydrate your astronauts and other installations, maybe. Might be fuel. Here we've got... Oh, so this will be for our tech tree here, right? This is all that stuff that's on white background is typically that tech tree. So we've got biomarkers, physics and engineering markers and some different uh, research markers for each of the nations based on each of those different sections on that track. And these are, let's have a look, double-sided. There's some damage markers. And then heliocentric transfer markers, so that's probably going to add um, either cost or time or resources to doing various orbital transfers and bits and pieces like that. Some different political markers as well, and a, and a space invader marker. <laughs> I'm excited. Oh, we have more money. Nice. Okay, good. Uh, we've got five billion, ten billion, twenty-five billion. Always like that. Then we got Uranus here, and then we got some of the moons because you have you've set up all this the planets of the uh, of the solar system. You got a lot of all moons represented too. So we've got Eris. I'm not going to pretend to do all these Greek names. It's not worth the hassle for you guys uh, to hear me butcher all those. <laughs> okay, those are these are very very nice components. I will be honest. We have deep space astronomy, space telescopes only. So this is your Hubble type stuff, looking at things, discovering things. We got Mercury, Venus. And you'll note these are much smaller as they would be than something like Uranus or the Jupiter was massive. We got Ganymede, Callisto, and then we have these. Look, so we have some bases, and then we have CVs, or so presume some form of carriers. I don't know what the terminology is. We got flybys and orbiters and rovers. These are all the Indian Air Space Agency stuff here. These are player boards. Interesting. So for the player boards, we've got this is the Russian one. So you have various different bases, um, some different, as you go through the decades, you have different funding and different research tech points available. And it looks like we have a population chart here as well, and in our foreign relations track. That looks like that could be very fun. Maybe you can cooperate with other players, or not, as you might with other ones. Oh look, they made them different as well, that's quite nice. Uh, so this is the North America, so it's the USA and Canada there. But it's a very similar setup there. I wonder if these are any different. No, those look the same. The funding is different, so that's nice. So there's some asymmetry there. And the tech points are a little bit different as well. And one, one, two, two, three, four, five, five. Those look very similar. The base population does look the same. I'm just briefly looking at there. So here we've got scattered disks, Alpha Centauri. Oh, so we do get into some deep space stuff as well. That's quite nice too. But yeah, a lot of asteroids, a lot of moons, Pluto. Oh, cute. And these look like a bunch of markers. Do those correlate to... Mm, I'm not sure. These might be resources of some form. But again, I'm just... I'm like not even touching it. But a lot of these are falling out. That's how nicely well punched they are. So that's nice. Here we've got playing pieces for the EU, for Europe, for Russia, and for North America as well. And these are double-sided with some reserve mark reserve markings on them too. We have South America and Africa, and then we have Japan as well. And again. It's, it's this part, and they all have a different special ability as well that's different. So, for example, the Japanese, they have robotic excellence. Manufaction, man, malfunction rate, sorry, is minus 2%. So, a little bit 
probably your stuff doesn't break down as much, which is quite nice. Uh, equatorial launch sites. Launch vehicles can carry an extra resource when launching from Earth. Because they're on the equator, it's easier to launch from there, so they can carry more, basically. That's quite, you know, you'll get different advantages or disadvantages based on what your faction is. A couple asteroid belts here. We've got Io, Europa, Trojans and Greeks. Whoops. Titan. Again, it's moons, planets, asteroid belts. It's the interesting stuff in our solar system that we're trying to explore. We have China and Europe. Okay, it is Europe. All right. Let's see. Europe. Roll an extra die for space telescope exploration and choose one to keep. So you get a bonus for doing just the observation aspect of that. And that, there was that, uh, that star field that you could put telescopes in. China. Reser reverse engineering. Tech costs a minus four per player that has already developed them. So if you're behind in the tech tree, that, you know, you can't do as much, but it's much cheaper for you to catch up. So that might be an interesting way to, to play that. Here we have a whole bunch of different, uh, I want to call them units, but I don't know where they are. So we've got supply stations, spaceports, mining stations, refinery, and research stations. That sounds like those are buildings or installations that you'll be building on various planets and different places. I wonder if that, uh, I wonder if those correspond to anything here or where you stack those. I'm not entirely sure because I haven't read the rules yet. <laughs> okay, uh, so there's some fire markers. Uh, that looks very cool, but I, one billion. I wonder if this is heat or fuel. Oh, it could be fuel. Mm, I'm not sure. And looking at this, it looks like it's Probably we got resource, water and fuel, maybe, because you can buy those. That's probably what those represent. Numerical markers, asteroids, victory markers. And these are double sided with different values on them. All right. And we've got Mars, Earth. Oh, I had a comet, we got Phobos, the moon, Luna. That's quite funny. There got Ceres. But all of these punch out really nicely. They're going to look great on the table when we set it all up. I think you're going to need a lot of space for this, though. This is a lot of pieces to put out. And I'll be interested to see if you maybe put out fewer of the moons up with fewer players, maybe. I, I, I just don't know. The setup would be interesting to see if that's the case. Or if you just set the whole thing up, but it's quicker to play through with fewer people. Uh, here we've got Chinese units, uh, Japanese units, and then this is uh, Africa and South American units there as well. Again, these are double-sided with the kind of a reserved side on the back. Then we have the Asian board. Oh, it's Asia, sorry. It's not India, it's Asia. You've got a bunch of other countries on here as well. I'll have to look in the rules as to what they conglomerate into them. It just looked like the Indian flag when it was much smaller. Uh, we have a policy tree as well. Now this is interesting, I think, because uh, it looks like there's a bunch of different policies that you can go through like space settlement, space diplomacy, military policy, um, but depending on what, I, I, I think each country has to have, so I think this EU can have space diplomacy. It looks, it has their flag. That might be where they start, but I think you might be able to change your policy and move along and get different abilities through what your policy is. That's always fairly neat that when games can do that kind of thing. And then the final thing in the box, is we have a ton of settlement markers and these are settlement times one times three times five times 15 uh, there's a bunch of small markers here as well unsure about how those are used in conjunction with those big ones uh, we have some missions oh maybe those are missions to those planets maybe those are objectives that you're supposed to do secretly that you keep face down maybe uh, and different denominations so we've got two Four, ten, 10 and 20 different denominations of those settlements as well so there is a ton in this box I am going to do my best to get this all punched and organized as quick as possible and to read these rules uh, because I've been excited for this game always looking forward to get my teeth into a big sci-fi or science exploration space game I just it's a topic that enthuses me uh, 
I'll get Grant Rand and we'll give this a go and we'll play this probably a number of times this year if we can get more people together because if it can hang more people I'd like to be able to get more people into it so appreciate you guys tuning in this is a big game I'm very excited to play this is Stellar Horizons from Compass Games uh, appreciate you guys tuning in I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com